This discussion will guide you through a maximum likelihood estimation problem using a Poisson distribution as an example. And the particular practical example we're looking at is the problem of modeling the number of goals in the Premier League match. The data we have are from almost two full seasons um, up to March 2014. So this is the data set. We have all matches. Uh, we know how many goals have been scored for each team. And I see so here you can see the matches. So that's the data we have. We'll return to them a little later. Altogether, we have 681. That should be 681 matches. And these data we will use to estimate parameters. So what you see here is the distribution, a histogram basically of all the goals. You can see about 60 of the matches have no goals and there's a match with 10 goals, so a maximum of 10 goals. And this is the distribution. So it turns out this sort of distribution is uh, well captured by a Poisson distribution, which lives on a positive line, but for natural numbers. So let's and uh, let GI be the number of goals in the i-th match, and we'll assume it is Poisson distributed. That distribution has one parameter, lambda, and it turns out that the expected value and the variance of GI are both lambda. Now this is really a feature of the Poisson distribution. At the core of our analysis is going to be the probabilities of Poisson distribution. So let's write it down. The probability that we have GI outcomes, GI goals, is here. This is just the probability for Poisson distribution. You can look it up in most stats textbooks. Now, if we continue with assuming that the number of goals scored in all the matches are independent of each other, then we can write down what's called the likelihood function. And due to the independence, we can link all the individual probabilities by multiplying them with each other. That only works because of independence. But now let's take the log of this. The log likelihood function will turn this product into a sum. And we just like working with sums much better than we like working with products. The n we use here is the number of observations and that's of course 681 as we have data for 681 matches. So what does maximum likelihood estimation do? It finds that lambda that maximizes the value of either of these two likelihood functions. Since the log uh, function is a monotone function, either will do. So let's use Excel or eViews. Let's start with Excel to find the maximum. So we basically have to implement that log likelihood function. So here are our goals, just a new spreadsheet where I isolated the goals. We need to calculate these probabilities. What we need is a certain lambda. So let's define here a cell with lambda and then we use an Excel function. We could write down the formula or we use this Poisson distribution. The probability for a certain number of goals given lambda and then we use false for a probability rather than the cumulative probability. We need to fix that lambda and then we copy across and then you have these probabilities for every match. Then we want the log probability, so we just take the log of this and we copy this down. And now we need to just sum up to get the log likelihood function. We need to sum up the values in column C. So let's sum all this up. Here's our log likelihood function. So now if we change the lambda, all the probabilities will change and therefore the log likelihood function. And we now want to find that lambda that gives us the maximum value for this LNL. So let's go and use the solver. If you can't see the solver in your Excel, you need to go to Options, Add-ins, and you will find, in, find it in the inactive applications. I have it here already, so click on Solver. We want to set the objective. That's a log likelihood function. We want to maximize it. We maximize it by changing that lambda value. Click OK. We find a solution. So the solution here is 2.76505. So let's go back and say using Excel, we found the maximum likelihood estimate for the lambda of 2.76505. Now let's briefly look 
at our data, it turns out this is exactly the mean of the data, the average number of golds. Is that a coincidence? We'll find out. So let's figure out how we do this in eViews. In eViews, you basically need to open an equation with golds. Um, I'll just highlight another series, that's just the home goals. Uh, and then open this equation, but I'll delete the home goals again because at this stage I don't want any explanatory variables. So I just want goals as a dependent and a constant. Now we need to change our estimation method to count Poisson. Okay, because we have count data and Poisson, we estimate this model and we get a value of 1.017. Now this is not the same lambda we got before, so what's going on? Now to understand this, we need to, to see that eViews is using a little trick which will come in very handy in a few minutes. So let me just extend this uh, equation just to see what that uh, probability f looks like. That's just the formula which we used previously. Now what is important to recognize is that that lambda which we which we used, this lambda really expressed the expected value and given that the data we have are part of the are on the normal line, the positive normal line, we really know that this lambda needs to be positive because we can't expect a negative number of goals. So how does EVs do that? It uses a little trick. It models the lambda not directly, but as the exponential of some value c. And why is that useful? Well, because that c, that could really, this is the one which is reported in eViews, and this c could be positive or negative. And that has advantages for the estimation. So it could be negative, but even if it's negative, the lambda is positive since we sent the c through the exponential function. So here it has estimated the c of 1.017059. So let's calculate what that implies in terms of the lambda. So we need to calculate the exponential of this. Let's just get a little calculator up. Here it is. And let's calculate 1.017095. So this is rounded for the exponential 2.76515. So there are slight rounding differences now because well, we rounded the C. But basically we get the same result. Okay, so our estimated lambda is really the same in EVs as it is in Excel. Now, is it a coincidence that that maximum likelihood estimator of lambda is equal to the average number of goals? And the answer to this is going to be no. And to show this, I actually do a little bit of algebra. And uh, that will also show you, perhaps give you a deeper insight into what maximum likelihood does. We'll start out with our log likelihood function, okay, with this beast here. So we therefore need to reconsider the log likelihood function. And the question was, which lambda maximizes this log likelihood function? This is the problem we are solving. Therefore, we use our good old friend a derivative. We'll need to find the derivative of that log likelihood function with respect to lambda. And then, of course, how do we find an extremum? We find it by setting this derivative equal to zero. Okay, and then we'll see how we can solve the resulting object for lambda. So let's first look just what that is. The log likelihood function is the sum of terms. So the derivative is going to be the sum of derivatives. So let's find the derivative of this of this term, the log probability. So we'll just have a little side note. Here we'll find the derivative of this with respect to lambda because then we just need to add up our result over all n. So what do we have here? We have a derivative of a natural log and that is just 1 over the argument in the log. But now times the inner derivative. So we're using the chain rule 
we have just the factor g one over g i uh, factorial, and then we need to use the product rule. Uh, g i times lambda to the g i minus one times e to negative lambda plus lambda to the g i times the negative of e to the negative lambda. Okay, all well-known rules. So now a few things fall away, the g i factorial. Then we have an e to the negative lambda that cancels out and then perhaps we can do a little bit of more work here. Ideally what we would like to factor out is a lambda to the gi because that would then factor out as well. But let's not take too many steps at once. So what we want here is a lambda to the gi. So let's see what we need to do to make this happen. gi times really we need to multiply to by lambda to the negative one to factor this out and here we just factor out or what we are left with is a negative one. That's great. This cancels out and this can also be written as one over lambda times gi minus lambda. So what we've gotten here is the partial derivative of our individual Poisson probabilities with respect to lambda. Now in the log likelihood these appear as a sum so that means that overall the partial derivative of the log likelihood function is just the sum of these terms over all i. Okay, remember the n is the number of observations and then we want to set this equal to zero, so let's multiply with lambda, so the uh, first factor falls away, so we are left with the sum of gi minus lambda, and that equals zero. That's of course the same as the sum of all gi minus n times lambda, because we're having some n terms, then we'll bring the n times lambda to the other side, and now we can see what's happening. We need to divide by n to get lambdas equal to 1 over n times the sum of all gi. So what we've gotten here is this first order condition and that determines our maximum likelihood estimate and that of course is just the average g. So it's not a coincidence that we get the sample average. It's just basically we have here an analytical solution to our maximum likelihood estimator as we would get it in OLS, but we wouldn't always get it in all maximum likelihood problems. Up to this stage, we treated all matches being identical. I, we expected the same number of goals for all matches. Now we want to introduce some variation to allow for this expectation to vary with some sort of variable. So we want the expectation of GI expressed as lambda, and now we introduce an i to be conditional on some variable. And let that variable be, for instance, top i. Now what is top i? Top i is this binary or dummy variable which is one whenever a match involves one of these fi five top teams. Right? That's a uh, subjective judgment of what the top team is. I do this the day after Manchester City beat Manchester United 3 0, so there may be some discussion. I also have promoted teams struggle straddling the two seasons we have data for. That's going to be another variable later. So how do we do this? How can we achieve this? Now we're going to use the same trick we saw already with Excel before. We're going to model that lambda i as an exponential of c, a constant again, but now an, another variable, that top variable, where a match involves a top team. Now again, inside the exponential function, this could be negative, could be, doesn't have to be, but still we get a positive lambda, which is what we want for our Poisson distribution. That's why we use this exponential trick. It's a very useful little trick. Now, how does our log likelihood function look like? Now we need to find two coefficients, c and d. They will determine the lambda and that will determine the probabilities. We condition on the gi and the top i variables. So we have a log, the sum of the log probabilities, but now these log probabilities, they're exactly the same for starters, just that the lambda gets a little i subscript because we acknowledge that it could vary. And that lambda i 
So the novelty is that little i subscript and the lambda i is modeled as this. So let's do this in Excel again and then later in eViews. Um, but before we do that, let's also introduce two extra variables. Apart from the top, we'll also introduce a variable prom i, that is whether a match involves a promoted team. Uh, so that's the prom i variable. And then perhaps I thought perhaps it's the matches where top team plays against the promoter team, which delivers the most goals. So I also create a variable top i times prom i. This will take the value one when a top team plays against the promoted team and the value zero in all other occasions. So that prom i is a dummy variable as well equal one if there's a promotional team involved, a promoter team involved. So here are all the data again. We need goals, top prom and top times prom. That's the variables we need. The last three of them are going to be used to calculate the lambda i. Okay, lambda for the i of the observation. Now to calculate this we also need some coefficients but first once we have the lambda i what we will need to calculate is again the, pr the probability, the Poisson probability. So let me call that LGI or better call it FGI actually, that's what I called it before. And then we want the log probability log FGI. Actually in the initial example I should have called these F as well rather than L. <coughs> so uh, to calculate the lambda i's, I now need four coefficients c, d, and e and f, e for prom i and f for prom times top i. Let's start out with some coefficients, one for the constant and zeros for the others. It shouldn't matter too much which values you choose. And now we implement this formula, just extended with prom i and top times prom i. So constant plus the d coefficient times top i plus the e coefficient times promoted i plus the f coefficient times top times prom i. So we're having four coefficients and that will deliver some value for lambda i. Now once we have the lambda i we can again calculate the Poisson probability for zero goals in the first match given that particular lambda and we don't want the cumulative then we need the log of this probability and then we just copy all of this down and then we need the sum of all the values in column F. So there's some mistake, we're gonna tackle this. Why are these here values? So let's see what these formulas are. Are oh, that last coefficient I didn't fix. The F coefficient I didn't fix, so I need to go back. I need to fix the F coefficient. I recopy all these cells down and then everything is honky-dory. So now again I want to use the solver. Now I want to maximize the value in cell 07 by changing which cells well these four coefficients. What you now need to do is you need to untick this box make unconstrained variables non-negative. Variables is really coefficient um, and then we get four parameter values here. These are now our maximum likelihood estimates. Uh, you've implemented the maximum likelihood method here in that Excel sheet. You, you can see we get different lambda i's, so that means different expected numbers of goals for matches. But the variation is quite modest, so it goes from 2.45 to 3.1 approximately. So how do we do that in eViews? We go to our Poisson model again and now to the constant we add our three variables top prom and top times prom and we get four coefficient values and if we compare the coefficient values you actually get exactly the same. Okay, Because we now use the same exponential trick in Excel as we did in eViews. So these four values are the same as the yellow values there advantage using eviews is that we now also get standard errors here and that means we can perform inference because under certain conditions maximum likelihood parameters are asymptotically normally distributed. So what have we achieved by adding these extra explanatory variables top prom and top times prom? 
We achieve that the conditional expectation of the number of goals, conditional on these two variables, top and prom, and the combination of those, actually varies. So we're not treating matches identically anymore, it varies between 2.5 and 3.1. So that's quite modest, really, the variation we can get from this model. If you look at the distribution of goals, 2.5 and 3.1, there's it's not a lot of variation when compared to the overall spread of number of goals. So what you would really want to try to do is to find more conditioning variables which allow you to model a large proportion of this variation, but we're not going to do this here.